I V M. We would like to thank Storytel for sponsoring this show. Storytel is an audiobook platform that lets you hear hundreds of thousands of stories on your mobile PC, wherever you prefer. This week, I'm going to recommend a modern classic. It's a story that many have seen, but few have heard or read. Game of Thrones by George R. R. Martin. The story is loosely based on the War of the Roses succession fights in 15th century England. When you hear Roy Dotrice narrate the story, it really brings it alive. Go to storytell.com slash IVM and you'll be able to get your first month for 99 rupees. That's 200 rupees off the regular 299 a month price. That's storytell.com slash IVM. Go get it now. When people write a capital or uppercase K suddenly in the middle of a word instead of a lowercase K, it means they hate authorities. Really? How is that even possible? Wait, I spotted the same trait that we call defiance in the handwriting of a famous comedian and IVM podcaster Cyrus Brocha. And here is what he had to say. You do not like people being authoritative for the heck of it. Oh, I hate authority. Yeah. I hate your right spot on. Only because it is told that you must because do they're it. Telling you me have what to, to do, do it. Yeah, yeah you I, have yeah, to. Yeah, exactly. No, but like, I, I, I agree. can't stand the authority. I agree yeah. with you because it's not about what they're trying to say. Many a times you agree with what it's, they're trying to say. It's only because the yeah. way it is said. And if you see anybody being arrogant, anybody being. Yeah, absolutely. Then, then it's you like go you knew me all my life. Thing. With authority, I'm a big fan of Tamiz culture. If they speak nicely to me, I'll do anything they say. You know, but we just don't do that. Nobody, I mean, the cop will just tell you, tell, okay. Well, you know, yeah. they, they don't, you know, just talk nicely. But anyway, that's, I've given up on that. But I don't like authority, no. Yes, and yeah. that has also led your career decisions and your many, many choices in life. You knew people going to be yeah. uh, irritating and they're going to be arrogant. And, and you have gotten into projects. Halfway through, you realize people are being authoritative and you've stepped out. Right. Uh, and sometimes you just walk out without saying anything and you just like withdraw in the middle of a conversation because you're like, no point. I'm going to lose my mind. I might, might as well like protect them from me. So I might as well walk out. So not just walking out, but more often I start teasing them and uh, <laughs> it becomes a confrontational after some time because I start behaving like a five year old and making silly comments and undermining their authority and, you know, making yeah. fun of calling them by their first name. Sometimes, you know, that irritates people when they're oh my God. Around other people. I have lots of techniques. Welcome to Absolutely Right, the first graphology-based podcast show in India. On this show, I present some revealing facts about your personality with the help of an unbelievably accurate study of handwriting analysis, also known as graphology. I am your host, Aditi Sarana. I am a graphologist and a high-performance coach. Now, graphologically speaking, the person who writes this abrupt uppercase K shows defiance. You may ask, How about other letters? Why only K? And what if it is somebody's style, you know, to write a K in that that way? Or how about other letters? Why only letter K? What if it is someone's style or even a mere mistake? You know, sometimes it may happen. No, it is not. I have tested it hundreds of times. And every time when I found this peculiar K, it matched my analysis. The writer disliked rules, regulations, instructions, Explicitly or implicitly. I know it sounds unbelievable. How can that one little variation in letter K talk about oppositional defiant trait? When researchers were studying handwriting strokes, they collected hundreds of samples and simultaneously asked the same people some personality assessment type of questions. As they drew parallels, they found some common patterns. They kept narrowing down until they could confidently, without any variation, rely on a handwriting stroke that can talk about a specific behavioral pattern. In this case, the capital K got associated with defiance, and I must say it is really, really accurate. Over these years, I have come to believe graphology way more. After going through more than 10,000 samples, I can rely on these 800 base strokes to talk about anybody's personality with utmost accuracy. Defiant people are freedom fighters in their mind. They fight any force that may infringe on their freedom. After talking to many defiant people, I learned a lot about what motivates their behavior, why they hate authorities so much. They associate authorities as someone who will misuse their powers because they have experiences like that. They are always on guard. They do one of these three things. First, they pick a fight and establish that they are the authority. 
Two, they say, go to hell to your face. Third, they walk away quietly, withdraw from the conversation and basically non-verbally convey, go to hell to you. Do you remember Safina played by Alia Bhatt in Gully Boy? When her mother told her not to go out and follow the rules, she fought and she figured out a way to do whatever she wanted anyways that Safina was being defiant. Against all the odds, when Vicky Kaushal in Manmarzia came to meet Rumi and defended his decision, that particular Vicky was being defiant. As Cyrus says, for a defiant person, it's all about tamiz and tehzeeb, about respect and request. They oppose what is being said as they cannot handle the rude, arrogant and merely authoritative tone of voice. I have met defiant people who have abruptly left their jobs, got so triggered by someone's rude behavior that they became physically abusive or endlessly fought with their spouse believing that she is dominating when in reality she wasn't. Let's look at the handwriting stroke formation of this particular trait one more time. Write down, I love cakes. Here the word cake does not demand a capital K. But if the writer writes a capital K instead of a lowercase K, then the writer cannot handle authority or authoritative behavior. If you want to be sure about this trait, then download the PDF document that describes the stroke, the handwriting samples associated with it, and some journaling questions as a fun sheet. You can download it from the link aditisurana.com slash podcast. Look for episode number 84. If your child has this stroke, then he or she cannot follow the rules without getting irritated. If your subordinate has this stroke, then you need to be gentle and respectful with them. And if your spouse has this stroke, then you make sure that you do not use words like you have to do the dishes or you should be coming with me to this party or whatever, those forceful connotations. You know what I'm saying. Now, if you have to deal with a person like that, let me give you three ways to do that. First, instead of saying you must do it, say do it or don't do it in a calm voice. This is very, very frustrating for them initially, but eventually they make a better choice. They fight you because you are the authoritative figure here. When you say do it, they want to oppose it. When you say don't do it, they want to oppose it because opposing the authority is their default mechanism. But when you give them a choice, initially they get confused, but eventually they feel they are in control and they'll end up making a choice that is suitable for them. Most of the time, completing the task they're assigned to do. Point number two, stay away from have to, must and should. If they feel that they are in a choiceless position, they feel uninterested and turned off. Have you seen couples forcing each other to do things together? Defiant people tend to walk away from such relationships. For them, a request is romantic, but a demand is incarcerating. Point number three, the show must go on. They fight you as they consider you as the roadblock in their mind. They feel it's their duty to fight anyone who may misuse power. When they walk away, withdraw or throw a tantrum, make sure that you step up. Get the work done without making them feel wrong. After a few attempts like this, they will realize that the tantrums are not working and you are unaffected by it. They will also understand that you are not misusing your power to control them. You are just interested in getting the work done. If you are a defined person yourself, then I know it's tough to rely on experts as they may sound authoritative. Some people still do it, but others just withdraw halfway through the process. I thought of giving you three journaling questions that you can use to ponder upon these issues. Question number one, what does authority mean to you? Write all that comes to your mind. There is no right or wrong answer to this question. If you use handwritten journaling, then it becomes even more effective. Question number two, who misused authority when you were weaker than them? In most cases, I have found defiance develops when kids are bullied by parents, elder siblings, teachers, or even strangers with authority. The sense of helplessness, in the moment, festers resentment for life. Question number three, what can you do when you get triggered in defiance? This is a tricky one. You have to sit down and think of all alternatives that you can use when you are triggered in the moment. Let's accept defiance 
brings in ego hassles, conflicts, triggers, fears, and insecurities. If you empathetically understand why you feel the way you do, you'll be able to help yourself and move forward, and in turn help someone else who is suffering from the same issue. Thank you so much for joining me on this episode of Absolutely Right. I hope you learned something really interesting today. If it has impacted you, then make sure that you become the first one to create this impact on someone else. Look at someone's handwriting and find the traits that you have learned so far. See if you can help them in any way. If you find this defined key, then make sure you click a picture and tag my Instagram handle at Aditi Surana. Send me that picture. Remember, you have to be gentle without sounding like a condescending expert or authority. You have to give feedback to them. Every month, I teach one graphology masterclass. I invite you to join me in this fascinating journey. a special course that i designed in the lockdown for people to understand themselves for real your handwriting can help you detect not only defiance but other anxiety patterns understand your kids and even hire better next batch begins on saturday 9th of jan all details are mentioned on the website aditisurana.com if you like this podcast then don't forget to check out other interesting podcast on ivm network you can listen to us on ivm podcast app or ivmpodcast.com You can also follow us on our social media. We are at IVM Podcast on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. Let's connect on Wednesday. Till then, happy writing! I hope you enjoyed that show. If you aren't following us on social media, please do. We're IVM Podcast on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. Once again, just a quick reminder: please do help us out by filling out our survey. It's at IVMPodcast dot com slash survey. It really does help us figure out who's listening, and you know what are the characteristics that we can go and push to advertisers. That is massively helpful to us. Please, please, please do help out with that. So on the network this week, let me start with a quick milestone. It's the hundredth episode of Begin the Journey with Ashish Vidyarthi. Congratulations to Ashish and the team. Great show. If you're not listening to it, he talks to you about just how to approach life. It's just very, very cool stuff. Do check this out. Want to mention the note with Maru Kinaya? She talks about why petrol prices are so high. On the Wired talk, Siddharth speaks with Harsh Mander. On advertising is dead. Varun speaks to Kabir Biswas, the founder of Dunzo. They have a really interesting conversation about, you know, what's the future of Dunzo and what they're thinking about. On the traveling professor's diaries, check out Siddharth talk about the performance paradox. I found it really fascinating and interesting. I think that you guys will really get something out of listening to that. Please do give that a listen. And finally, let me mention Zindagi Diaries. It's Ragini Kumar's poetry podcast. The first week when it came out, we put out five poems. First week, we put out another five poems. This week, and the response has been phenomenal. Do check it out. It's in Hindi. It's a poetry podcast. Something a little different. Do give it a shot and let us know what you think. And with that, I hope to see you again next week. Feeling overwhelmed, anxious, struggling with too many obstacles, don't know where your life is headed. Well, if you are dealing with one or all of these, tune into the Positively Unlimited podcast because in each episode I share a life lesson, a life hack, a pro tip that can help you get your life back on track. All episodes are available on the IBM website, IBM Podcast app, or wherever it is that you get your podcast from.